Hello, this is Pastor Gene Kim from San Jose Bible Baptist Church. So a lot of people, they wanted to learn more lessons about the topic of prayer. And I am very happy to see many onliners seeing the priority and the importance of this topic above all the other quote-unquote interesting topics that majority of onliners would like, like current events, prophecy, end times, etc., or something deep doctrine or something new. But I think the problem with many Christians is that we always like to see something that fascinates us, but then prayer, our relationship with God, is not the number one priority. So I hope that this video would be a blessing to all of you. So basically, to help you with your prayer life and to study more topics about this, a lot of you have asked me about that. So let's just start it over here. You can go to our Real Bible Believers channel on YouTube, and a lot of you wanted to watch more videos from me about prayer. So I finally did it. Go to Playlist, and if you click on Playlist, you'll see over here a playlist called School of Prayer. If you click on School of Prayer, then you're going to see all these videos that I did concerning about prayer. If you see this one, it talks about the power of prayer. And then over here talks about spiritual warfare with prayer. It talks some interesting things about psychology within the prayer life. Um, this one is an example of an all-night prayer meeting. Now, we've done a couple before, but this is one of the videos where we show an all-night prayer meeting on how we do it. We have some more examples on prayer. If some of you are struggling in your prayer life because it's so difficult, this video might be very helpful for you. And here's a sermon. I only did one sermon on prayer, but this has been my classic that I've constantly used throughout the rest of my life. So... Uh, the, this playlist will be extremely helpful on all areas of the prayer life, so give those videos a watch. I think they'll be a blessing to you, and they'll be an incredible help. Now, some other things that I would recommend concerning prayer, these are classical preachers and classical works that have been famous throughout time amongst Christian churches on prayer. So I'm going to give you these following men but just keep in mind that the following men that I'm going to show to you, that they are not current in Bible-believing truth. This has been years ago, you got to understand. So these men will not be familiar with Bible-believing truth because we had the luxury throughout passages of time where men of God have laid right doctrines and foundations throughout time, and because we've been having a culmination of all the right doctrines today compared to people who had to study and search and lay it out for us, I want you to keep in mind that these following preachers that talk about the subject of prayer, that they might have some areas that are wrong that you might have to keep an eye out, okay? So that's just an awareness. I don't want people to get upset at me when they say, Pastor Kim, these classical preachers taught something wrong over here. Um, if you are during their time where they didn't have internet like you did, <laughs> and Bible-believing preachers who taught you this stuff like you had the luxury of receiving, uh, give these men a little bit of a break on that. Just ignore their errors and listen to the right stuff that you can find concerning prayer. So one of them is Leonard Ravenhill. He's a very famous person concerning on prayer. Just type out his last name and prayer. And usually the Hackberry House, I love listening to their audio recordings of Ravenhill and other prayer warriors and Spurgeon. So usually that audio company Hackberry House, they concentrate on persecuted churches in North Korea. So those audio recordings, if you concentrate more on those, they do the best for Ravenhill, the best excerpts for Ravenhill, Spurgeon, and other men of prayer. So Leonard Ravenhill needs no introduction, so just listen to him, and you'll see a lot of hype on him on the internet, which is apparent. 
The other one is Charles Spurgeon. Now, to me, I'll be very honest, he's probably the classical preacher that I've gleaned the most from concerning prayer. All of the other men, I think it's because they're more focused on a devotional aspect to God. A lot of it would feel redundant. I remember studying in Berkeley about uh, early 18, about 1800 literature, 1700 literature. They like to be redundant. It's because they like to focus on certain words. So for people who are modernized today, you're not going to get all that. So then the classical preacher that you'll probably get the most out of would perhaps be Spurgeon. The next one is Andrew Murray. Now, Andrew Murray, he's got a lot of recordings on prayer over here. So I would advise that all you have to do is type down prayer and Murray. If you search for that, then you can get a lot of gleanings on Andrew Murray concerning prayer. The other one is the famous George Mueller, which he needs no introduction. He's the famous one who prayed in millions of dollars feeding orphanages, uh, children in orphanages. So he had literally hundreds, if not thousands, of prayer requests answered and recorded. So just type down Mueller and prayer, and they have recordings of him or biographies about Mueller's life, which I would highly recommend concerning listening George Mueller on prayer, because his was perhaps the second most classical preacher that I've gleaned the most that was pretty easy that was easier in comparison. Now, books that I would recommend is, this is the most famous book on prayer that er nearly everyone should know. It's E.M. Bounds' Complete Works. So you got to get his complete version, Complete Works of E.M. Bounds on Prayer. And it is phenomenal, life-changing, and I would highly recommend to buy it. It's got eight classic explorations. The other one is The Kneeling Christian. And the author put his name as anonymous due to a prayerful, humble spirit within him. Now that is some Christian. Now the person's name, Albert Richardson, he actually took this work, The Kneeling Christian, and uh, a lot of it is, this is a scarce antiquarian book, so to speak, that they would call it. But basically, how we would view it as is through the lens of scripture, ignoring all the errors or whatever that may have accompanied this as well as other men that I mentioned to you, you just look at what is doctrinally right and you will find so many gleanings if you concentrate on what's doctrinally right, not the error, and compare it with scripture, you're going to get a lot of gleaning from this man about what is prayer, how to get answered prayer, and then things concerning about suffering in the Christian life. The kneeling Christian is highly recommended concerning about a spiritual relationship and power, getting power in your prayer life. Now, David Brainerd is famously known for his prayer life that the that it is said that the snow would melt around him when he would pray. So if you read the life and diary of David Brainerd, you can get a lot of uh, gleanings from that. Now, just to uh, keep in mind again that you have to overlook the errors, you have to filter it out, and just focus on what is doctrinally right and compare that with Scripture. John Wesley men mentioned that if there's any book that any man should read, it should be The Life and Diary of David Brainerd. That's what John Wesley said. Now, one person is John Nelson Hyde. Now, John Nelson Hyde, um, I tried to find some of his excerpts or sermons that people did, but... The best advice would just be to type down John Hyde on prayer. Now, this is the man that some of you may have heard that he would pray so powerfully that great famous preachers like Wilbur Chapman would ask Nelson Hyde, John Nelson Hyde, to pray for their meetings, and they would get results just like that. So John Nelson Hyde, uh, when he died, it is said that he prayed so hard throughout his prayer life that when he died, they discovered that the heart in his chest was used so much that it moved that it moved to a different side and location. <laughs> That's how powerful his and intense his prayer life was. So John Nelson Hyde, I would recommend to listening and researching his biography so you can study how he would pray. 
Now, this one is the following Bible-believing preachers. So I'm happy to say here are Bible-believing preachers that you can depend upon concerning the subject of prayer. Now, David Walker, Dr. David Walker, I would recommend just uh, go to Calvary Baptist Church, all right? Type down Calvary Baptist Church, and then when you type down Calvary Baptist Church here, you're going to find him. And then uh, what I would recommend is his subject on the Lord's Prayer. You see that? He has a series on the Lord's Prayer that can be definitely life-changing. Basically, he goes through each part of the Lord's Prayer with some basic introduction on this stuff. And it is incredible. It is incredible on this one. I would highly recommend listening to his brilliant division on the Lord's Prayer concerning this topic. Of course, the Lord's Prayer, that's doctrinally for the tribulation, and Dr. Walker is aware of that, but he tries to show how we can spiritually, not doctrinally, but spiritually apply it to the Christian life. The other one is by Dr. David Peacock. Obviously, he needs no introduction, but if you uh, search him out, Bible Believers Baptist Church, if you search word that one, and then when you come to his uh, sermon audio page on prayer, then look at his section on prayer right here. That's it, uh, right over here. That's his series on prayer over here. And when you do that, I am sure you're going to glean so much more because Dr. David Peacock, just listening to his sermons, I mean, it is, people know it, that it's deep, it's spiritual, and that it is impactful. So hearing him doing like a one-on-one -on -one personal relationship with God subject on prayer is going to be definitely fascinating at best. So here are all of his sermons on prayer I would highly recommend. Now, Pastor Brian Donovan, if you go to kjb1611.org, so this is the website you need to type first. And when you do that, if you type down pray on the search word like that, then, okay, then it'll pop out. So then you see Brian Donovan lessons on prayer. When you click on that, You'll arrive on this page, and when I I was there one time when I listened to his sermon on prayer, and man, let me tell you what, the Holy Spirit just poured over me. I got right with God. I would recommend just buying his MP3 on prayer. I mean, it changed my prayer life, to be honest, just listening to this man in person preach this one. So listen to his subject on lessons on prayer. Now, the famous Dr. Ruckman, obviously, he needs no introduction. And for some of you who get bored on spiritual topics because it's too many words, it's redundant, well, he'll draw it out for you. <laughs> We're a TV-minded generation, so he'll draw it out for you. But aside from that, obviously, his sermons and his teachings on prayer, they're going to be doctrinally accurate. That's one thing that's pivotal about this man is he prioritizes doctrine above everything. So you're going to get everything that's doctrinally correct while he's teaching on the subject of prayer and hindrances to prayer. Talks about real prayer, how to make prayer life real, and the sin of prayerlessness, which I'm sure will be life-changing to you. That's a subject to listen to. The last thing that I want to show you is this prayer diary. So uh, if you... Again, all of this is found at kjv1611.org so far with Pastor Donovan, Dr. Ruckman, and this prayer diary. And some of the books, E.M. Bounds' book on prayer, The Kneeling Christian, Life and Diary of David Brainerd, is in this website. So my recommendation is rather than going on Amazon, because sometimes I notice Amazon would amp the prices. But if it turns out that Amazon is cheaper, then you can go for it. But it'd be better if you can buy it all at once at this bookstore, is what I would recommend. And get the prayer diary. The prayer diary journal, inside, it looks like this. I think you kind of saw a little glimpse of that earlier. So this is what it looks like. You name the person, you write down saved or lost, and then you write the date. That way, when you write down the, the person's request, you can also pray for their salvation if they are not saved. Now, what I love about this book, they don't show it, sadly, but if you look at the uh, last page, uh, it's going to show about even so come Lord Jesus. Now, I'm not sure if that's correct or if I wrote that down myself, <laughs> but 
uh, this prayer journal, I did not have it for about, oh, let's see, eight to 10 years because I developed my own prayer journal. But back then when I didn't know, uh, when I was starting in my prayer life and PBI changed a lot of my life, I bought tons of these prayer diary journals and they're very cheap as you can tell. They're about less than a dollar over here. So I would fill out literally journal after journal of this and sometimes a lot of them were old prayer requests. So I would lay down three, two to three if not four of these journal books opened while I would pray. So I would highly recommend to buy this prayer diary journal and then spend hours praying to the Lord. Now, for some of you who are just beginners, obviously, you might say this is difficult. But again, uh, watch my video concerning about struggling with prayer, and then it can help you. Just start out little bits, and you'd be surprised that when you go on your knees and spend quiet time with God, personally, Relationship 101, when you're finally capable to reach that place and that point, you will forever be blessed and forever happy about the power and the relationship of prayer.